Hey there guys and gals, it's your boy Norex and welcome back to yet another video. I know it's been a while, but hey, what do I do when I got stuff to do? So, how are you guys doing? GitHub Copilot is out and that's the topic of the day, that's the topic of the video. So what's up with it, right? Uh, in this video, we're going to go and explore a little bit of the history of where this amazing tool comes from. Uh, explore the data and see some of the use cases and we're also going to be building a tensorflow model that is going to generate the data and learn on that data now i know that it's not going to be anything special or specific it's just going to be a very very simple xor table right um, and we're going to learn that we're going to learn that in using entirely github copilot so without further ado let's jump right into the video so, OpenAI and GitHub Copilot, this guy. It's it's a very powerful tool. It's I'm pretty sure if you're an AI enthusiast like I am, you've probably heard of this tool. It's really amazing and it's uh, you know taking on the trend and uh, it's what everybody's talking about nowadays. It's pretty cool and uh, if you go to the website, you can see that um, you know they have this uh, they have this sign up button right here that you can sign up for it and get involved with it in the wait, wait list and there are some demos down here that you can see so we have typescript golang uh, python and ruby and then there are you know more explanation on how uh, how it performs the tasks and what it's actually able to do um, now i, I don't really want to explore this page if you uh, if you want to you can go read all about it and then, then there's the uh, frequently the asked questions that you can go down to and start uh, reading all the questions that people frequently ask like the availability the telemetry how much data it, it sends and receives like how it uh, kind of trains what it's been trained on and all of that uh, dandy jazz so where does it actually come from? They say it's from Codex, right? OpenAI. I mean, they don't say it's from Codex, but powered by OpenAI, right? So, Copilot is built on the large language code model that is the OpenAI Codex, right? So this is the this is the this is the page from OpenAI blog. Uh, OpenAI Codex is a very uh, very powerful code model and it also powers github copilot they've actually mentioned that here uh it, it's very good in in syntax uh understanding and context understanding it's, it's it's a very powerful model and i believe that i think i'm not sure yet but i think openai a codex is actually built on top of the gpt3 model that came out a while ago that was really blazing hot and everybody was talking about that so yeah, GPT-3 is a very large, or not a very large, but rather large language model. I'm, I'm putting my coats right here, but I don't have a good camera, so you can't quite see me. So coat on coat, a large language model that uh, has been trained on, on a lot of data and is able to talk to you. So you can, you can talk to it and it'll talk back. So you can have a, um, you know, like a very, very human level chatbot that believes it's actually sentient. So yes, uh, GPT-3 powers OpenAI Codex, powers GitHub Copilot. So this actually is uh, like the third step in this uh, whole GPT-3 journey. Now, um, Codex actually has been trained on a data set that is called the Pile, right? It's one of the bigger data sets out there. It's uh, 825 gigabytes of text, right? And here's the uh, here's the archive uh, paper if you want to read about it in PDF format and all whatnot. So definitely give it a read if you're interested. Um, I haven't, but uh, you probably should if you if you if you are a fan of papers. I mean, it's 39 pages of uh, paper all about data. Not really my thing. I don't really read a lot of papers, anyways. But this is a good. Uh, this is a good like. Uh, kind of a looking it's a kind of a outlook at how things uh, how things kind of um, get built up together to to reach the open AI github copilot experience that we're about to jump in now before we jump right into it I have a, a tiny amount of um, complaint to make I mean it's not really a complaint it's really just uh, saying why we are doing what we're gonna do what we're gonna do so as you can see, I have actually two uh, 
to visual codes open right here and one of them is in a virtual machine which is called a Vin 10 dev box if I hit that you can see that it's, it's, it's my Windows 10 running a virtual machine and this one is running on my uh, Linux machine so and the, uh, the, the reason why we're doing that is because if you go to the extensions and search for GitHub Copilot, you can see that as of this date right here, which is the uh, November 8th of 2021, um, it is actually available on Windows because we're using... Um, oh, no, I don't want that. God damn. All right, I got to hit F11 to make that happen. Go to the About page. Oops, that was a that was a long, large sound. Anyways, so we're on version one point six two uh, with the uh, with the Visual Studio Code on uh, the Windows machine. I mean, look at the telemetry, man. Jesus, why do you care about my Chrome version? Anyways, so this is what we have here, but here we have one point six one, and that is probably why it's not available on Linux Visual Studio Code just yet. I'm on Arch, and that's uh, they still are yet to come up with the, uh, with the with the next version of Visual Studio Code. Anyways, so that is the reason why we're having uh, two Visual Studio Codes right here next to each other. This one is where we're going to write the code, and this one is where we're going to execute it. Because it's TensorFlow, I can't execute it on a virtual machine. It requires GPU access, and virtual machine is not... Oracle v VM is not really good with handling the uh, host GPU and sharing the host GPU to the guest virtual machine. So, without further ado, let's just jump right into coding with our pair programmer AI, the amazing co-pilot. Let me just introduce this guy right here. Really amazing tool. Uh, let's go ahead and see how it how it performs. So, what we're going to do is we're going to create a very simple TensorFlow model, right? But before we do that, we got to import some things, right? So I'm going to just go ahead and write import all, yo, all libraries that are required to build, I'm sorry, to perform learning using TensorFlow, right? And this is the code, this is the thing. And we do import TensorFlow as TF, really easy, really nice. Uh, let me just uh, fix things. And we are also going to import NumPy as MP. This is really nice. So this, these are the only two libraries that I actually need. Now, uh, in, in this particular case, I think it would have been easier uh, to just uh, <laughs> import these, write these myself rather than uh, allow uh, Copilot to do it for me. But um, it's really cool. I just want to show off what it, what it, the capabilities that it has. So we're going to go ahead and create a function that uh, creates a new level with one hidden layer. Now, uh, that generates an XOR data set, right? So we're going to go ahead and create a data set, right? And there we go. This is really looking beautiful. So we have the inputs and the outputs, and they correspond really well, just like you would expect from an XOR table. Nice, nice. So now we have our data, let's go ahead and write a function that uh, creates a SQL, I always hate that word, sequential model for our X or data set. Give me that, baby. So we have create model and it creates the model. That is so beautiful. So we have the Keras model sequential. We add one dense layer with uh, one, in, one, one unit, that is the output unit and two input units. So it's a very, very simple perceptron. It's nothing like two in, two units and one output unit, right? Um, this is good enough for learning uh, learning the XOR table. This is this is um, just enough, actually, for learning the, uh, the XOR table. This is uh, also compiling the model, which is really nice. I really like that. Um, but we're going to actually go ahead and change this, change this definition just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And uh, right, this function will, I'm sorry, this model will have two hidden layers that use ReLU activation. So I can tell it to modify, I can give it more data with regards to what I want, and it will generate it, right? 
And there we go, there we go. So instead of that, instead of that one little tiny bit, now we have two hidden layers that have activations as real. Now this is also gonna be our input layer, right? So input layer, uh, as a little sequential, uh, two hidden layers, or input layer, hidden layer, and the output layer as the sigmoid output because we want to we want to get a value between zero and one. Now the compile is uh, is actually good that the uh, this function also compiled the model for us. Uh, optimizer uh, loss and metrics are all defined here. Now obviously you could uh, you could just mention it up top right here that you want these as the inputs to your function and it would actually do it. It's it's very good at understanding the syntax. So with that being done, yeah, yeah, let's let's go ahead and return model. Why not? That's good. Um, return the model. <laughs> so um, we are good with our data. We're good with our model. Now what we need to do is we need to train the model. Right. So function to train the model. Right. And it takes a model and x and y, and it performs um, performs the training but let me just add let me just do a little bit of uh, train the model takes uh, epoch as input right model and epochs really nice really nice so we also we have this definition and soon it's gonna give me as you can see it's working out and it's happy now it's gonna give me the actual data and it's gonna return the model. We're also going to go ahead and write a test function, right? Function to evaluate. Function to evaluate or test the accuracy of the model. We're going to write that and it's going to give a test model and it's also going to generate the interior text. Just give it give it up, baby. Come on. Come on, you I know you can be quicker than that. I got to give it some time. No, it didn't generate anything. All right, test the model. Test the model and return the accuracy. How how if I write it like that? So as you can see, you gotta fiddle around a little bit with it, with it until it, it works, right? So there we go. Um, we're gonna go ahead and I mean we've put the accuracy right here, so it already knows that the accuracy is the metric that we want. So it's really easy. We have generated our model. We have created our model. We have generated our data. We've created our model. We are training our model on our generated data. It understands that our data comes from this function, so it automatically puts that function in. We are also going to test our data on the, on the test our model on the exact same data. This is not a good practice, but uh, this is just uh, you know the, the the purpose of this video is to just show off the amazing abilities of GitHub Copilot. So we don't really care if. Uh, we're being accurate in, in, in a uh, perspective of data science. All we gotta do is write if main, right? And it's gonna generate the if main is main, and then it's gonna generate the rest of the things as it understood them. I mean, look, look how amazing this is doing it. So we're creating the model. It understood that when we, when we want, it understood from the syntax of the text, it understood from the code that we wrote, wrote that what we wanna do is we wanna create a model, we want to train the model and we want to uh, save the accuracy and we want to print the accuracy. This is what it understood from what I wrote, what I gave it, right? I, I mean, I, this is what I wrote, right? I wrote like what, five lines, six lines? And it generated the rest of it as, you know, on its own, just by understanding what we want. So now I'm not going to run this here. I'm actually going to bring it up, um, up on this other Visual Studio, right, where we actually have access to GPU, and we're gonna go ahead and run it right here. There we go. We we we, we evaluated the model. We built the model using uh, built the model using uh, GitHub Copilot, and then we evaluated them that that model. I can't even talk, and uh, it gave us an accuracy of 0.75 or 75 percent, which is uh, nice. I mean, I wasn't really looking for anything. Uh, specific in terms of accuracy, I was just uh, you know, I, I, I have fun to take a run from it. So uh, the question of whether OpenAI can create another AI is actually answered right here. The answer is yes, but you got to do the work, right? Uh, it doesn't it doesn't do the work. You can't just tell it to give me an AI and then expect it to give you an AI. So I can't just do like uh, 
write me a write a TensorFlow X or okay TensorFlow program and expect it to give me anything good. Um, there, I mean, it's just happy and <laughs> it's just not even doing anything. Um, thing I'm trying to say is. You can't overgeneralize what you're expecting out of it. You can't generalize too much and then expect it to work. You gotta just give it the snippets of what you want and it'll generate them for you. Overall, it's a good experience. It's a nice experience. It makes uh, developing much, much, much faster and more efficient. And it just generates better code. I mean, this is Python, but if you try uh, some C code or C++ or uh, things of that nature, you're going to find that the syntax that it generates is actually very, very professional. I really love the syntax. I, I am learning from the syntax that it generates, and I'm really grateful that the amazing people behind this amazing tool have given me access, bestowed upon me this, this holy access to this amazing tool. So, what are my thoughts with regards to this amazing tool? Well, I have a couple of thoughts, a couple of things that come to mind. First thing is, um, when I talk to people about this uh, tool, they usually ask me whether I think it's going to replace programmers or not. I mean, they don't ask me, but that's, that's usually one of the topics that um, comes up and we talk about. Um, personally, I don't believe that it's going to be replacing programmers anytime soon because as you just saw right here I still need to tell it what to build in order for it to understand what I need right so in order for it to actually build what I need uh, so I still write these things and I still need to understand these things to be able to work this tool so you still need a programmer to tell this tool what to build in order for this tool to build that thing so I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon maybe at an eventuation it will happen it will uh, obviously absolutely it will uh, replace all programmers with uh, normal people so you know your boss for example could just come into the room and talk to the computer and the computer will generate for it what your boss needs um, without the need of any programmers at an eventuation it'll be like that but um, right now or anytime soon <laughs> not really I don't really believe that uh, it, it'll replace our jobs anytime soon so that's my thought with regards to whether this amazing tool is going to replace us or not and the short answer to that is no so uh, they say in the frequently asked questions that this is going to be a commercial product when it actually releases now I have really no idea what they are planning to do with it, how they're going to release it, how they're going to price it, how they're going to sell it. I really have no idea. But I do um, think or guess that um, it will probably be available at uh, on, on Visual Studio 2022, uh, I think the professional and enterprise editions. Uh, because Visual Studio 2022 is already like shipping with a very advanced uh, intelligence. It's like a like a more advanced intelligence, and this is this OpenAI Codex um, GitHub Copilot. I think it's just intelligence, but on steroids, right? So it is not far off uh, the imagination. It's not far off the truth that it could be a part of Visual Studio professional and enterprise experience. And um, that's, I think, all my thoughts that I have with regards to this tool. I think it's really great. I think it's really going to improve the experience that you're going to have as a developer very much. And I believe that it is going to improve rather rapidly, rather soon. So, uh, fingers crossed, it's not going to replace us, uh, hopefully, <laughs> but uh, I'm not really sure about anything at all. So, um, thank you guys for watching, for making it through all this much into this video. If you enjoyed this content and uh, you think it was interesting, then give it, a, give it a like. And if you think that you're into this kind of content, then give me a subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys, you're awesome, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Take care.